In Japanese folklore, a mythical creature resembling a mermaid was known as a ninyo. Portrayed as a fusion of a monkey and a carp, these beings dwelled in the depths of the sea and were believed to herald misfortune or tempestuous weather if captured. Legend had it that if a ninyo washed ashore, it foreshadowed impending war. One particular tale revolves around a girl named the 800 nun. Accidentally fed ninyo meat by her father, she consumed it and fell under the curse of immortality. Enduring years of sorrow as her numerous spouses and offspring succumbed to mortality, she eventually dedicated her existence to Buddha, embracing the path of a nun. Perhaps owing to her sanctity, she was granted release from her immortal existence and passed away at the age of 800. In Christian lore, a tale recounts an encounter during Jesus' journey to crucifixion, where a Jewish man scorned him by striking him with a shoe and urging him to hasten his pace. Jesus, in response, foretold that despite his departure, the man would linger until his eventual return. Upon comprehending the significance of the prophecy, the man assumed the name Joseph, underwent a conversion to Christianity, and promptly received baptism. However, the ensuing curse bore peculiar consequences. He found himself perpetually forbidden from sitting or resting, except for a brief reprieve on Christmas. Every century, he was plagued by an incurable ailment, convulsing for an uncertain duration before reverting to the age of thirty. A recurring theme in numerous Greek myths involving mortals revolves around the perils and consequences of hubris, characterized by excessive pride. Many mortals, driven by audacity, sought to deceive or challenge the gods, only to face enduring punishments. In an earlier episode of his life, Sisyphus endeavored to outsmart Zeus, ensnaring Thanatos, the embodiment of death in Greek mythology. This act resulted in a world where mortality was suspended, greatly unsettling Ares, the god of war. For his transgressions, Sisyphus was condemned to the arduous task of daily rolling a boulder uphill, only to witness it inexorably roll back down each night. Another tale unfolds with King Ixion, already in trouble for the murder of his father-in-law, seeking forgiveness from Zeus. While on Mount Olympus, he committed the grave error of attempting to assault Hera. Zeus, discovering the misdeed, deceived Ixion by conjuring a cloud resembling the goddess. As punishment, Ixion found himself bound to an eternal ordeal, strapped to a flaming wheel. Cinnabar serves as the prevalent ore of mercury and holds a pivotal role as a key component in the Taoist elixir of immortality, known as Huandan or the reverted elixir. Taoists believed that the consumption of specific substances, such as cinnabar or gold, would imbue the body with their inherent qualities and purify it of imperfections hindering the attainment of immortality. Regrettably, the majority of these ingested materials proved to be poisonous, leading to numerous casualties, including several Tang dynasty emperors. Eventually, the concept of external alchemy underwent a transformation into internal alchemy. This approach involved harnessing one's innate energy through practices like yoga, aiming to achieve immortality without resorting to the perilous ingestion of toxic substances. The peaches of immortality hold significant prominence in the Chinese epic, Journey to the West. Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, was chosen as the guardian of the peaches and, in an impulsive act, consumed one, endowing him with one thousand years of life. Initially evading capture, he was later apprehended. However, owing to his ingestion of the pills of immortality, Sun Wukong proved impervious to execution. Subsequently, he waged war against heaven, prompting the gods to seek intervention from the Buddha. Through cunning trickery, the Buddha managed to ensnare Sun Wukong, confining him for five centuries. Following his release, he embarked on the renowned quest depicted in Journey to the West. The peach tree, 
said to be planted by the Jade Emperor and his wife, Zai Wangya, bore fruit only once every three thousand years. Generously shared with the other deities, the ripe peaches were believed to bestow eternal life upon those who consumed them. Umrita, a Sanskrit term that closely translates to immortality in English, holds profound significance in Hindu mythology. Initially mortal or deprived of their immortality due to curses, the devas, or gods, sought a means to attain eternal life. In a collaborative effort with their adversaries, the asuras, anti-gods, they embarked on the ambitious task of churning the milk ocean to produce a divine nectar called Amrita. To outsmart the asuras and prevent them from partaking, the devas devised a clever strategy. Vishnu assumed the guise of a female goddess capable of arousing uncontrollable lust, thereby distracting the asuras. Consequently, the devas safeguarded the Amrita for themselves. Legend has it that yoga masters possess the ability to consume Amrita, as the devas, in their haste to thwart the asuras, spilled some of it, allowing select individuals to partake in this elixir of immortality. The Norse golden apples distinguish themselves from their Greek counterparts by their exceptional significance to the Norse deities. These apples hold paramount importance for the Norse gods, serving as the key to maintaining their immortality and eternal youth. Idun, the goddess of spring, assumes the crucial role of the orchard's guardian. However, a pivotal event unfolded when Loki deceived Idun and surrendered her, along with the coveted apples, to the giant Thyasi. This act triggered the onset of aging among the Norse gods, causing a decline in their power. In a desperate bid to reverse their fate, the gods, with their waning strength, compelled Loki to retrieve Idun and the precious apples. Transforming into a falcon, Loki successfully rescued Idun and the apples, ultimately restoring the gods to their youthful vigor. One of the prominent elements in Christian mythology is the Holy Grail, a cup or bowl with significant historical and symbolic importance. According to tradition, it is the vessel from which Jesus drank during the Last Supper and was also thought to be the receptacle used by Joseph of Arimathea to collect Christ's blood as he hung on the cross. In the legendary quests of King Arthur and his knights, the Holy Grail became a sought-after relic, prompting journeys far and wide. Only those deemed the purest of souls were believed to be worthy of laying hands on it. The narrative holds that Sir Galahad, distinguished as the sole individual able to touch the Holy Grail, attained immortality as a result of his unique connection to this sacred artifact. <laughs>